Hey everyone, you with Tesla Tom and thanks so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel. In this video today, I'm going to show you how much it has cost me to power our house as well as to charge both electric vehicles over the last 60 days. So here's a snapshot of myself. I live in Sydney, Australia with my family of four. We've got two electric vehicles in the garage, a Tesla Model S and a Tesla Model 3 with two three-phase electric vehicle chargers set up. I've got 8.4 kilowatts of solar panels on our roof and I've got a 13.5 kilowatt hour Tesla Powerwall 2 home battery. And here's a breakdown of how I power our house. So PowerShop is our main electricity provider and I'm going to go through how much the PowerShop tariff is a bit later on in this video. I'm also set up with Evergen which is a virtual power plant. Evergen pays me $10 a month as a retainer and pays me $1 for every kilowatt hour they pull from the battery in times they need to stabilize the grid for the rest of the community. So I highly recommend Evergen if you've got a battery to help offset your costs. I'm also signed up with Charge HQ, which is currently in beta as of March 2022. How Charge HQ basically works is that it takes the excess solar from your solar panels after you've finished charging your battery for the day and puts it into your cars whenever they're plugged in. So this is a great and efficient use of excess solar energy as opposed to feeding it back into the grid for a low feeding tariff. I'll probably do a full review of the Charge HQ app when they're ready to release it to the public. I've also got a lifetime subscription with Teslascope, which allows me to drill into the data and tell you how much exactly I've driven with both cars and how much electricity has been used to power that distance. So let's have a look at these two periods between the 13th of January 2022 and the 12th of February 2022 and the 13th of February 2022 to the 13th of March 2022, a period of 60 days. So in terms of distance, the Tesla Model S has driven 2,054 kilometers, whereas the Model 3 has driven 2,872 kilometers for a total of 4,926 kilometers. In that time, the Model S has charged and used 532 kilowatt hours, whereas the Model 3 has charged 621 kilowatt hours worth of electricity. The Model S efficiency is 3.9 kilometers per kilowatt hour, whereas the Model 3 efficiency is 4.6 kilometers per kilowatt hour. And of course, efficiencies are always a bit lower because you've got to take into account phantom drain, which is the electricity used as part of the battery management system and to keep other processes running in the car, like sentry mode, for example. I've also taken into account the times I've used a Tesla supercharger or other third-party electric vehicle chargers outside of what I've used at home for the purposes of this video. So this slide here is basically the raw data from both my electricity bills over the last two billing periods. And I've left it here basically for you to check my maths for the next slide. Down here is also how much I've received from Evergen, $10 in February and $56.86 from March. So I've condensed all that data from that last slide into this more user-friendly table. So let's see how much the electricity is from PowerShop. So I'm with a time of use plan with PowerShop, which means there is a different cost for different times of the day. For my electricity. So I've got two off-peak periods, one that costs 13.2 cents per kilowatt hour and another which is 6.6 .6 cents per kilowatt hour. This off-peak two period is between midnight and 4 a.m. every weekday, Monday to Friday, and is part of the electric vehicle plan with PowerShop. Off-peak is between 10 p.m. and midnight and then 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. during weekdays and between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. on weekends. Peak is between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. on weekdays, Monday to Friday, and it costs me 36.52 cents. I'm not too worried about this more expensive period because I've got a Tesla Powerwall 2 battery, which covers this expensive period of time. And the shoulder period covers every other time and cost me 17.6 cents per kilowatt hour. A daily supply charge of $1.10 per day. And as you can see, this off-peak 2 period is when I use the most electricity, and obviously that's when I charge our electric vehicles to take advantage of this very cheap 6.6 .6 cents per kilowatt hour. So let's have a look at this column here where I've added the costs between the two billing periods, January, February, and February, March, into this one big column. Off-peak 1, I've used 340 kilowatt hours. Off-peak 2, 1,236 kilowatt hours. Peak period, 24 kilowatt hours only in 60 days, which I'm very happy with and shoulder of 234 kilowatt hours in the last 60 days. And the costs is $44.88 for that off-peak one period, $81.58 for that cheaper electric vehicle midnight to 4 a.m. period, and $8.76 for peak period, which I'm very happy with, $41.18 for the shoulder, and $66 for daily supply charge, which brings me to a grand total of $242.40 
over the last 60 days. This row here is the Power Pack costs, and one of the greatest benefits of being with PowerShop is that it allows you to prepay power months in advance, which means you can save more with your electricity. So for example, even though it cost me $242.40 in the last 60 days, because I prepaid my power with what they call power packs, in reality only cost me $222.41. And that's before the feed-in tariff, which is how much PowerShop pays me back in credit when I feed that excess solar power back to the grid. So in January, February, I received a credit of $19.45 and in February, March, a credit of $16.80 with a total credit of $36.25. And finally, this last row is from Evergen, which is how much they pay me to have some control of my battery. So in January, February, they paid me $10, which is the retainer per month. But in February, March, as you can see, they took quite a bit of energy during that period from my battery and they paid me $56.86. So therefore, I've got an extra credit of $66.86. So therefore, from that $222.41 with that prepaid electricity, take away $36.25, take away $66.86, that gives me a grand total of $119.30, which is how much I paid in electricity to power our house and both cars for 60 days. So in summary, again, family of four in Sydney, Australia, that's us. We've got 8.4 kilowatts of solar and a Tesla Powerwall 2 battery. Our power bill was $119 over 60 days. That powered our entire house and two electric vehicles for a grand total of almost 5,000 kilometers. And if I had an ICE car with an efficiency of 10 kilometers per liter, and I'm currently paying $2 per liter, which is how much it is in Sydney at the moment, and then some, it would have cost me $985 alone in petrol. And if I had a more efficient car like a hybrid that ran at 5 kilometers per litre at $2 per litre in Sydney, that would have cost me $492 in petrol alone. And as you can see, that is far higher than the $119 I used to power our house and the EVs over the last 60 days. So right now at this point, I just want to pause and think about how much you would have paid in petrol had you driven 4,926 kilometers in the last 60 days. So of course, every time I make a video like this, I get asked, well, what about the cost of the panels and the battery in the cars? All right, so let's address that right now. So in 2013, we installed three kilowatts of solar, which is fully paid back by now. In 2019, I installed an additional 5.4 kilowatts, which is halfway through its payback period. And in 2016, we installed a Tesla Powerwall 2 battery. And some of you may have seen my payback video, which I calculated about eight to nine years payback time for that battery. So that means in 2022, we're six years into that eight to nine year payback period. And for both EVs, I bought a Tesla Model S secondhand in 2016 and a Tesla Model 3 in 2019 as well. And I often get asked, well, what if you don't have solar battery or incentives or a virtual power plant? Well, to be honest with you, there is no reality where I wouldn't have this set up. I would always try to find the best deal and make sure I maximize the incentives that's available to our area. And my philosophy is that the home and electric vehicles should not be seen as separate entities, but rather as one system, given that they all basically are either powered by the grid or your renewables. And some might even argue that solar panels and batteries actually increase the value of your house. And there's certainly real estate criteria out there that supports this. And finally, I just want to quickly mention PowerShop, which I'm with for my electricity. As I said before, you can prepay your electricity. As you can see here, uh, for May, you can add May future savings, future packs. For example, if you pay $25, you get $30 worth of electricity. And same with June. If you pay $30 up front, you get $37 worth of electricity, which I think is worth doing. And of course, they've got a referral program as well. If you use my referral link, which is in the video description below, you get $75 worth of credit. I get $75 worth of credit as well. And of course, I just want to thank all the very kind viewers who have used my referral link over the last two months. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. All right, guys, well, that's it from me. That's how much it's cost us to power our home and charge both electric vehicles in the last 60 days. And of course, given the high petrol prices currently, there's no better time to discuss this topic. All right, everyone, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already yet. And until the next video, stay safe. And as always, happy charging.